Oh, it's so warm. If you're a sucker for fast food, join the club. But be warned, here are 10 fast food items you should never order under any circumstances, part two. McDonald's McLobster. See? He's her lobster. Avoiding a nautical crustacean sandwich from a fast food restaurant might seem like a no-brainer, but since its inception, this seafood-based handheld menu item from McDonald's has been chosen one too many times by the hopeful, well-meaning patrons. It's not always wise to gamble, but it's a safe bet to assume all of these McLobster order placers were very disappointed. Popping up on the McD's menu every so often, usually on the East Coast, the McLobster was McDonald's poor attempt at diversifying their menu and creating a classic lobster roll. The lobster roll is usually a delicious, long, sub-like sandwich consisting of chunks of fresh and mouth-watering lobster served atop a soft, buttery roll. Unfortunately, fast food and lobster don't really go together, and if you've ever ordered a McLobster from McDonald's, you would know this firsthand. That's a good-looking lobster tail. Most legitimate lobster joints feature a tank of live lobsters fresh for the picking. This is because lobster has to be served as fresh as possible to be as delicious as possible. Since the average McDonald's restaurant can't accommodate a live lobster tank, the lobster meat morsels in the McLobster roll are anything but fresh. They are also often kept warm under that glowing red heat lamp. This method of cooking from frozen and heat lamp warming may work for burgers, fries, and chicken nuggets, but not for seafood. As predicted, the McLobster is rubbery and tasteless. It's like eating a buttery sub roll jam-packed with pencil erasers and rubber bands. McLobster? More like McYuckster. This saltwater mishap is a definite no-go. Sonic BBLT Sonic, a little ball of super energy? Sonic Drive-In claims there's no such thing as too much bacon. While we hate to disagree with you, Sonic, we believe the old adage to be true, you can have too much of a good thing. While most can agree that bacon is more than likely the salty meat of the gods, having too much of it is anything but godlike. Bacon proves the existence of God. A good example of this is the Sonic BBLT. There's way too much bacon on this BLT wannabe. The BBLT is meant to be Sonic's version of the classic BLT sandwich, which contains a little bacon, some lettuce, a few slices of tomato served on toasted bread. The quantity of each ingredient is important to ensure the perfect flavor profile. This flavor profile cannot be achieved in Sonic's version. It appears they're attempting to give their sandwich the appearance and sickness of a hamburger by piling on a ridiculous amount of bacon. The BBLT should actually be called the BBBBBLT because it contains a whopping six full slices of bacon. It's safe to say Porky Pig would not approve. The excess bacon makes the sandwich overwhelmingly salty, leaving no room for the flavors of the other components to be enjoyed. It's basically just like eating a ball of bacon the size of your fist. While this may seem like a great idea to bacon fans, in practice, it really isn't. A standard BLT is a classic for a reason. Sonic, we urge you to stop messing with a good thing, because if it ain't broke, it's best not to fix it. Especially if your attempt to fix it includes six slices of bacon. A&W Sriracha Cheese Curds Try the Swiss you can't miss! There's nothing wrong with some deep-fried spicy cheese curds, right? Well, one would think not. A&W thought the same thing when they created a side dish called sriracha cheese curds. Now, there's no hidden surprises here. The sriracha cheese curds are exactly as described. They consist of Wisconsin white cheddar cheese curds mixed with spicy sriracha hot sauce, then deep-fried into bite-sized cheesy nibbles. Yum? Well, not really. A&W sriracha cheese curds are delicious for the first two or three bites, but after popping a few into your mouth, they become overwhelming really fast. Eating this cheesy side dish is a sure way to experience flavor overload, especially when that flavor is from heavy and rich cheese combined with the spicy sriracha enveloped in a breaded, greasy pocket. It's just too uh. much for the average stomach lining to handle. I don't need to know the havoc dairy products are going to wreak on your bowels. If you have a few friends to split them with, then sure, go for it. That way everyone can enjoy two or three bites of this thick conglomeration of heavy tastes and textures. But as a side dish for one person, we cannot in good conscience recommend this one. That is, of course, unless you're planning to cleanse your palate after each and every bite, and you have a bottle of Pepto-Bismol on hand with which to wash it all down. If you choose to avoid this cheesy side, don't worry. A&W has some delicious alternatives, like their classic crispy fries 
fries and their tasty onion rings, so you shouldn't have too much trouble making a better choice. First time here? Then become an official Babbel Topper by hitting that subscribe button and never miss out. Thanks! Chick-fil-A Honey Pepper Pimento Chicken Sandwich Shit, this is crazy. I'm a 28-year-old man. I should be able to eat a chicken sandwich if I want. Oh, Chick-fil-A. Their delicious chicken sandwiches coupled with the chain's owner's political leanings have caused inner conflict for millions of fried chicken sandwich-loving Americans for years. Those hilarious cows do a fantastic job convincing people to eat more chicken, and the drive through efficiency of every Chick-fil-A restaurant is second to none. And if you have a hankering for some fried chicken strips and waffle fries, there's no better place to go any day of the week. Well, the, the Sunday closing thing, it, it's a very contrarian position. Well, except for Sundays. While Chick-fil-A dining is usually a pleasure, their honey pepper pimento chicken sandwich is most certainly not. In this order, Chick-fil-A has taken their incredible chicken sandwich and defiled it with a giant dollop of pimento cheese mixed together with finely chopped jalapenos and then drizzled with honey. In all honesty, they could save some money and skip the honey on this sandwich, and maybe even the chicken, because both are completely overwhelmed by the intense tang of the pimento cheese. Listen, there's a time and a place for pimento cheese, and that time and place is never, ever on a Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich. KFC Double Down Dog Harlan Sanders, the new chef. Kentucky Fried Chicken was founded by Colonel Harlan Sanders in, you guessed it, Kentucky in the early 1930s. It began as a modest roadside food stand selling deep fried chicken during the Great Depression and 20 years later, it turned into a nationally recognized fried chicken franchise. Every red-blooded American of fried chicken eating age can recognize the Colonel's smiling face and they also know that KFC is the place to be for all your fried chicken needs. What KFC is not known for is their hot dogs, nor should it ever be known for their hot dogs. Unfortunately, in some parts of the globe, KFC is offering a menu item called the Double Down Dog, and the only thing it deserves double of is two sums down. It's a hot dog bun-shaped fried chicken patty that wraps around a traditional hot dog wiener smothered in a choice of mayonnaise, ketchup, or cheese. While the KFC Double Down Dog has not yet made landfall in America, this is a warning that should be heeded by anyone who entertains the idea of ordering one should the sandwich make itself available. Double down on your decision to just say no to the double down dog. Panera Bread Soups You know something? <laughs> no soup for you! When the air is getting crisp and sweater weather descends, a warm bowl of soup brings much-needed comfort from the cold, warming the body and soul from the inside out. Just the word soup brings to mind the nourishing security of a bowl of chicken noodle when getting the sniffles, or the cozy warmth of a creamy tomato soup on a winter's evening after playing in the snow. Ah, soup. Like a hug for your insides. That is, unless it's being ordered from Panera Bread. Sadly, there are countless tales from former and current Panera Bread employees employees warning patrons to avoid their hot and steamy soup selections at all cost. Yes, I would welcome it. <coughs> You're welcome. Why? Hygiene, for starters. Apparently, Panera's soups arrive at their locations frozen in plastic bags, and those bags are generally thawed under hot water in a sink that is more often than not unsanitized. Sometimes these bags have tiny holes or tears. The contents of both leaky and non-leaky soup bags are served up anyway. Would you like a little sink slime with that soup? Probably not. Employees have reported that these soup bags are often open with a regular pair of office scissors, transferred to a large plastic jug, then poured into the stainless steel containers on the visible soup line. How often are those plastic jugs cleaned, you may ask? Hardly ever. While the Panera Bread soups may taste delicious and warm you up when you're feeling chilly, you may end up ingesting more than you bargained for, so it may be best to steer clear. Little Caesars Extra Most Bestest Italian Sausage Pizza Pizza Puffs and Duck a la Ranch Pizza! When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, that's amore. 
But when it hits your eye like a Little Caesars extra most bestest Italian sausage pizza, that's a trip to the hospital to get the sausage picked out of your cornea. Little Caesar released a pizza that they actually named the Little Caesars extra most bestest Italian sausage pizza. And the title is not the only thing that's a mouthful. This pizza is loaded up with Italian sausage, so much so it's hard to taste anything else. The cheese is overpowered by it, the sauce is overwhelmed by it, even the crust takes a back seat to the strong taste and texture of too much Italian sausage. For the Italian sausage lover, this may sound like a dream come true, but be careful. Eating too much of your favorite food, especially when that food is spicy and greasy, could permanently land it on the I'm never eating that again list. Nobody wants to break up with an Italian sausage forever. Best to stick with an Italian sausage pizza that has appropriate ratios. Otherwise, you may end up scarred for life, which will not be an extra most bestest experience. Dairy Queen Chicken Strips Put it in a waffle cone and dumped a bunch of creep sprinkles all over it. Finger licking good, cooked to perfection, deep fried chicken strips are a guilty and not so guilty pleasure for many fast food lovers. Most fast food establishments have an offering of chicken nuggets or strips, including everybody's favorite ice cream staple, Dairy Queen. While the DQ peanut butter parfaits and blended blizzard treats are second to none, one menu item that should be adamantly avoided at Dairy Queen are the chicken strips. The Dairy Queen menu showcases several chicken strip options, from three-count and five-count baskets to saucy chicken fingers rolled in honey barbecue sauce. Well, we could deep fry the hell out of chicken, I could tell you that. However, the unfortunate and terrifying thing about these strips is how often Dairy Queen patrons have bitten into them to discover they're raw. In fact, it's happened enough times to enough people that they're worth avoiding altogether. Fool us once, Dairy Queen, shame on you. Fool us twice, you won't get the chance. Dairy Queen may be ice cream royalty, but a chicken strip savior? Definitely not. Best to avoid. Jack in the Box Chicken Teriyaki Bowl But Jack in the Boxes were originally built in France to contain evil. If you've ever been to a Jack in the Box restaurant, you know they have a lot going on. Jack in the Box is not afraid to try anything and everything. Their menu consists of fast food staples like burgers and fries and random Chinese and Mexican inspired meals like egg rolls and tacos. Just like the childhood toy, Jack in the Box is always a surprise. While some surprises are fun and welcomed, some are not as welcome, including the Jack in the Box chicken teriyaki bowl. Jack, my boy, you really went out on a limb with this one. Unfortunately, this is one surprise that should not have come popping out of the box. First of all, fast food rice is an art, and one bite into this bowl provides enough evidence Rice is really good at stretching meals. Uh to suggest Jack is not skilled in the art of preparing long grains. Secondly, the sponge-like chunks of chicken breast have a texture similar to that of a memory foam mattress topper. Combined with limp pieces of steamed broccoli and a lackluster teriyaki sauce, this bowl is a major do-not. We appreciate a place with a vast array of culinary options, but with an already complex menu, Jack's Chicken Teriyaki Bowl is a selection we can happily live without. Subway Seafood Sensation. And then I'd be like, what about the meatballs, sir? That's good. Another fast food item that you should never order under any circumstances is none other than the Subway Seafood Sensation. Subway has been beckoning us for years to eat fresh with their marketing campaigns. Subway is advertised as the healthier alternative to deep fried fast food establishments, where you can customize your own submarine sandwich and watch it be prepared in front of you by a Subway artisan. That's right, a sandwich artisan. Now, we don't want to question Subway's qualifications or what their employees have to do to be considered sandwich artists. Gang, meet Greendale's newest student, Subway. But we do need to warn Subway lovers to avoid, under all circumstances, the Subway seat food sensation. For starters, there is nothing fresh about this sandwich, and the Subway restaurant generally prides itself on providing the freshest ingredients. The crab meat on this seafood-based handheld is packaged, frozen, and reheated, left to sit in a metallic dish on Subway's ingredient counter, which is not an ideal situation for seafood. Also, the crab is not actually crab at all. It's imitation crab, which is a combination of pulverized fish and fish parts, colored, artificially flavored, and shaped into crab meat-like forms. It's kinda hard to eat fresh when you order a sub with previously frozen mystery meat. All of this to say, Subway has a lot of fresh and delicious menu items. 
Their chips and cookies make for excellent sides, and their soups are very tasty. So really, there's no reason to order the Subway Seafood Sensation in the first place. Avoid this one at all costs. Stick around, leave us a comment, hit that subscribe button, and tap or click on another great video.